I'm Alicia Michalisic Gonzalez, and welcome to Real Talk, a place where healthcare professionals share stories about their real human experiences working in medicine. And for those of you following along at home, yes, I said Gonzalez. After what was a pretty rough 2020, our sound engineer, Marco, and I decided to end the year with the one thing we could think of that would wrap it up on a note so positive, we almost forgot that it was a complete mess the 12 months before. So we did it. We got married. A little tiny COVID-respecting masked and socially distanced elopement ceremony in Los Angeles, California. And then we took January off to let ourselves just kind of be, which worked out because that was a pretty intense and emotional month too. COVID-19 surged to new heights in California. Our nation's political environment went through some unrest and big changes. And overall, we find ourselves at the outset of 2021 wondering if any of the hope that we all felt changing the year on our calendars was actually warranted at all. Or... Are we just stuck in this false delusion that this is going to end someday? Which brings us to today's storyteller, Jessie Stark. While Jessie is not a healthcare provider, she does work in the healthcare industry as a quality program manager with Fituity. She basically supports doctors in creating educational or other innovative programs that help us do our job taking care of patients better. And she's great at it. And last year, when COVID coming on the scene meant no more in-person gatherings, we really made an effort to virtually bring Real Talk storytelling experiences to all kinds of people working in the healthcare industry as a way for us to process together, to stay connected, even though we all felt so isolated. And that included Jesse and her team. At that original session, Jesse shared a story about a time in her life when she felt fully trapped trapped in a body and a life that just wasn't hers, wondering every day when this awful purgatory would end, just wanting to go back to normal, but having zero choice in the matter. The life that she knew was basically gone. And what she learned about perspective and patience, about letting go but maintaining hope and how long these kinds of things take despite every fiber of your being, wanting to just wake up one day and hear that it's all over. That story is perfect for right now. This is Jesse's story. Horses have been a part of my life since before I can remember. Every waking moment as a child was spent on or around horses, drawing horses, pretending to be a horse. You get the idea. I'm sure all of you know a little girl who is horse obsessed and probably runs through these types of activities every day. As a child, I competed nationally through high school, often riding other people's horses and sail horses. And I always had what people call the feel and was able to coax the best out of any horse that I rode. Horses were my passion, but I was committed to college and furthering my education, or at least my parents were. And I really didn't have any other choice um, with respect to that. And I certainly wasn't destined for the Olympics or anything, but a future career in horses was not out of the realm of possibility. So the meat of this story starts on a beautiful spring day in May, about 11 days after my 21st birthday. And my future was just changed forever. I was riding a horse at a local stable with my friend and roommate at the time and we were jumping him up to see what he could do. He felt amazing. I remember my friend exclaiming that she'd never seen him jump so well, and we raised the jump one more time, and I remember as I cantered toward the fence, I felt him gather himself and power over this oxer. His back was round, he landed perfectly, and I felt the sensation of flight that I so enjoyed. Then something unexpected happened. I just fell off. My friend ran over to me and my crumpled body and noticed I had dirt in my eyes and I wasn't blinking. She immediately called 911 and I was rushed to the ER with what was initially diagnosed as acute head trauma, fall from a horse. I was wearing a helmet for those of you who are wondering. (laughs) I know you are. 
And um, fortunately, I had an amazing ER doc who discovered that I had, in fact, not suffered external head trauma, but had suffered a massive brain bleed at the base of my brainstem, which had caused me to black out and fall off. Thank goodness I had not been driving a car when this occurred. You can think of, I'm sure, all sorts of different permutations that could have ended much worse. As most of you know, brainstem bleeds don't usually end well, and I went into a coma shortly after. My family was called, and they rushed to the hospital to say their goodbyes. They were told I would never wake up, and if I did, chances are I would be unresponsive or a vegetable. For 10 days, my mom slept in my hospital room, and then I woke up. I remember seeing concerned faces, so many concerned faces, but I was so happy to see my friends and family. I didn't understand what had happened. Why did everybody look so sad? I felt like I was trapped in a body I didn't know. Doctors and nurses kept coming and going, asking me questions. Do you know who the president is? What is larger, a tree or a bush? It depends on the tree, I wanted to shout. But only mumbling came out. I tried to ask for something to write on. Thank goodness, someone finally handed me a small whiteboard. I could get this nonsense all sorted out now, I thought. But wait, I couldn't move my right hand. I couldn't write. I couldn't move at all. What was going on? I thought I must be trapped in some crazy dream. And so this went on for three weeks. Every day I struggled to be heard, to let my family know I was still here, in this body that wasn't mine. I wanted to see the joy in their faces as I realized I was coherent, that I was in there. I wanted to reward them for continuing to believe in me and for not giving up. Every night when the lights went out, I would think to myself, wow, I can't wait to wake up tomorrow morning and tell everybody about this crazy dream I had. Alas, it wasn't a dream. We can't always control what happens in our lives, and sometimes we find ourselves in a tailspin, but this was a complete nosedive. Obviously, I recovered mostly. And after about a year of rehab, I returned to finish my degree. Ironically, I had to rely on the note-taking service that I used to support with my own carefully crafted notes. Most people would never guess this about my past, but I know. I won't ever have the feel on a horse that I once had. But I like to think my daughter has it, and my heart soars when I get to watch her ride. I still cringe every time I have to take a picture. But when I see my crooked smile, it reminds me of where I've been and how far I've come. I embrace my new Southpaw penmanship, and it reminds me just how amazing our bodies are and what we can overcome if we stay positive and look ahead to tomorrow. My story may be unique to me, but we all have a story, something that has shaped us, a challenge we've had to overcome. My experience doesn't define me but it has contributed to the person I am today and my outlook on life. Perspective is a funny thing that way. I definitely believe we, and by we, I mean ourselves, our families, our communities, are stronger than we think we are, and hardships and challenges build that strength. It has been 20 years since my accident, and I honestly don't know that I've ever told this story from beginning to end. But in preparing for this talk, I've had a chance to reflect on this turning point in my life and contemplate so many others. I also made sure I called my mother <laughs> and tell her how much I love her. I think it's so important to take the time to recognize our past, embrace when we fail, and celebrate when we triumph over adversity. Take one day at a time and remain hopeful. Tomorrow is another day, and there is really no telling what we can accomplish when the sun rises and we open our eyes. As Jessie says, her story may be unique to her, but we've all had something that has shaped us, a challenge that we've had to overcome. I mean, hello, SARS-CoV-2 in the entirety of 2020, we're looking at you, kids. But in Jessie's words, my experience doesn't define me, she said, but it has contributed to the person I am today and my outlook on life. 
perspective is a funny thing that way. We are stronger than we think we are. And Jesse's right. Hardships and challenges build that strength. You never hear stories about leaders or artists or heroes, societies, cultures that just were ridiculously amazing and changed the world after a perfectly charmed life growing up with zero adversity and everything handed to them on a silver platter. No, that is not how this story goes. Because we are not who we are as a sum of our successes and accomplishments. We are who we are as a sum of the obstacles we've overcome, the adversity we have fought against, the bumps and bruises and cuts that we got along the way when life was messiest, that have since become the scars that mark us as unique, that tell this story of us that's not the same as anybody else's story, but that has these low moments, all of which make us better if we let them more resilient, strong, smart, innovative, resourceful, hopeful, patient, better now for having been tested and struggled. So for those of you out there feeling like 2021 has already let you down, that January 1st came and the hero of your story didn't canter in on a gorgeous horse and lift you out of the trenches of 2020 as you gallop off into the sunset of a post-pandemic world, Remember, you're not alone. So many of us keep hoping to wake up the next morning only to find this was all a crazy dream. But knowing that it's not, perhaps this is our challenge for the new year as so beautifully given to us by Jesse Stark. Make a conscious decision in your own life to recognize our past and current struggles. Embrace that we have fallen. Celebrate the moments when we triumph over adversity. Take one day at a time and remain hopeful. Tomorrow really is always another day, and there is no telling what we can accomplish when the sun rises and we open our eyes. Thank you to Jessie Stark for sharing her story with us, to Marco Gonzalez, my new husband and our sound engineer, and to all of you for listening. I'm Alicia, and this is Real Talk. Want to connect with the Real Talk podcast or record your story with us? Start at realtalk.transistor.fm, or you can follow the link in the show notes for this episode.